for me, like it just it still hasn't sunk in. I look back at the stadium every time I leave and you know it still brings joy and happiness and it feels like my home now and I want to be here for the rest of my career. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to 90 Min. My name is Jakey, I'm delighted to say, joined by the man, Mr. Harvey Elliott. How are you, mate? You okay? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well, very well. We're here today um, for the launch of a new New Balance boot. No, for real, I'm loving Bad the design. Other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's um, good. Just first off, mate, talk us through how it came about, how the design came about. I know Pays is a big part of your life. So yeah, what was the, what was the thinking behind it? You know, I just wanted something different. As I know of yet, yeah, no one's really had their dog in a football boot, so. I just thought, why not? As you said, he's a big part of my life and I wanted him with me throughout the whole journey. How big a part does he play in your life, just in general? Is it like on days off and you're taking him out and like, does he give you that separation from the pitch a little bit? Yeah, definitely. He gives me that kind of enjoyment in my life. I, I can get out and do bits and bobs with him. He, he gets tired very quickly, so we're only walking for five, <laughs> ten minutes and then he's, you know, he's wanting to go home. But yeah, he's just such a, a loving, you know, dog to have around the family. Just on the boot, talk through the process of how it how it came about and what the sort of collaboration was like with New Balance to, to make this happen. You know, it was a long going process. So obviously you just can't come up with a design and bomb there it is. I went back and forth, you know, but the, the design team at New Balance were amazing. You know, I gave them my ideas. They asked me a few questions, what colours and what features like I wanted the most and stuff like that. And they came up with a, with a masterpiece for sure and another product that, you know, I'll, I'll keep for the rest of my life. Playing for your boyhood club, playing for a club that's been a massive part of your life. How is that every week? Because is there like an added pressure to it? Is there an extra responsibility or do you kind of thrive thrive in that? I would say it's more, you know, happiness and excitement more than pressure. When the opportunity came and, you know, I heard there was, in, there was interest in me. Yeah, it was just one of them where I wanted to take it with, with both of my hands and make sure I made the full use of it. And yeah, I mean, I'm loving every Because I remember you saying like, you play every game like it's your last since yeah. you joined Liverpool. Do you still still going with that, even every day in training? And like... Yeah, definitely. When you step on the pitch, you need to do your job. But, you know, when I come off it, I'm still the happiest kid in the world playing for <laughs> Liverpool. So it's a win-win and doing what I love, playing football. Um, I mean, I can't wish for anything different. I just wanted to touch on this season because just from the outside, like you've really made an impact. Like the few games I can list off the top of my head, obviously Newcastle, Celebration of the Wolves, even Everton as well. Just so far in this season, how have you found it? Because every time it feels like you're getting on the pitch, you're influencing the game, you're impacting it. I've kind of had um, a different role this season. Last season, I was, you know, starting a, a fair few games. Obviously, we signed new players and stuff like that and got big quality around the team. So I've kind of had to approach it from a different, you know, perspective. For me, it's just making sure I'm ready. You know, I'm watching the game and then the minute I come on, I know how the team's playing. It's just about me trying to come on and, you know, affect the game in the best possible way. And, you know, so far it's, it's kind yeah, of work. Cool. You mentioned the signings there. Is there a couple that stood out? Because for me, like, obviously Dominic's getting a lot of the headlines. From the outside, I'm looking at him going like, this guy is a serious player. He's yeah. making pings from like, <laughs> nah, <absolutely. laughs> right back across the pitch. Out, like, genuinely, how good is he, do you think? Nah, yeah, he's, he's obviously world class and still so young as well. And hopefully he's going to be here for, for many, many seasons. Um, as well as the other signings, everyone's came in and, you know, fitted into the team very well and uh, showcased their talent. and. You know, to have these players coming in, it's you know, it's always a, a positive boost for us. And do you find it lifts your performance? Yeah, it does as well. Because you you know, you look on the bench and you see the quality on the bench. It's like right, I can't <laughs> slack in my performance. I need to stay on top and make the most of it. What's been the message from the boss compared to maybe when you first joined? Because obviously he's kind of seen your development for when you joined at 16, making your debut at MK Dons. Has that relationship changed the way you interact with each other, or is it still? No, I mean, the first day I walked through the door, you always kind of took me under his wing and would tell me things I needed to improve on and, you know, put my arm around me if I've done something well and, you know, gave me many, many opportunities. So I think that's just, you know, kind of manager and kind of person he is. He, he wants to give everyone an opportunity. At the end of the day, it's just down to you to take it and take those opportunities and keep being in the team. One of the things that I kind of noticed was when you talk about your dad, it kind of stretches off the pitch as well. Yeah, he's a super fan and wants the team to do very well. And it was like a kid in the candy shop for him as well. Whenever he sees the players and the manager is you know, he's just buzzing. There was one story that, that stands out for me and will do for the rest of my life is when we played Tottenham and I think we won 10-1 or something and I scored, I think, nine or something like that. 
and the goal we conceded was because of me. I got in a car and had a big beam and smile on my face. He was like, yeah, well done, but you know, it was your fault, the goal, and <laughs> should have done this and that. And I feel like it's kind of stuck with me all, all the way, whereas, you know, if it's him not telling me, then I know myself and not beat myself up, but you know, I reflect and want to learn from it and next opportunity, make sure it's different. Is he still all that now? He is, yeah, is he? Yeah, 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 he is. He's a bit less now because I'm growing up, so he knows I'll, I'll tell him off. And, <laughs> and stuff like that but to realize like if i've done something wrong or if i've made a mistake and you know i don't really need you know people telling me i've, sure. I, I've done it it's just about you know taking responsibility for myself one man i know you've talked about a lot is, is mo as well yeah. i know a lot of people see obviously being a sort of left footed player cutting in from the right they've always seen that sort of comparison um is there a story that kind of stands out for you about your relationship <laughs> <laughs> It comes up all the time. Yeah. Is, is there a story? I, like I've heard, I've heard the bread roll story. Yeah. Is there? That is true. What's that relationship like with Bo? Because I mean, nah, it's good. It's he like, seems so humble as well. He is. He's one of the most humblest guys I've ever met, and he's always trying to not just me, but help out all the young lads and um, look out for them and stuff. But I feel like we have kind of that, you know, extra good connection, especially playing on the right side with him. We're always laughing, and joking. He's a great guy to look up to. Have you found like your personality sort of grown as it's gone on? Because I'd imagine when you came in at 16, you've got to have a lot of confidence, right? Up till now, have you seen your personality and develop, development change? Or have you just seen yourself become a little bit more outgoing and confident? What would you say? Yeah, I'd say, you know, my confidence has grown. Playing for the club that I support, it was it was hard, like walking in the door the first couple of times, because I was thinking, like, I didn't really want to make a fool out of myself. I wanted kind of everyone to like me and, you know, just try and get myself at ease first before, you know, I was thinking about anything else. but. Now, I mean, it's, it's, I still have the fan in my mind, but it's my job, you know, I'm here to, to, to play football and I'm here to do what I can for the team and, you know, try and get results. I go into each and every training session, every game. I just, you know, I need to keep doing it. Was there a moment where you thought, yeah, like I've established myself here, I'm now gonna become one of the key parts of this For me, this like it just, it still hasn't sunk in, but I can't really let it affect me. I need to, as I said, I need to go out and do my job. I look back at the stadium every time I leave and, you know, it still brings, me like joy and happiness yeah and of course just excitement to, to go back to you know Anfield and the training ground and, and whatever and yeah for me there's not really been a moment where like it's clicked because you said you wanted to stay at Liverpool for the rest yeah. of your career right I would love to absolutely you know Touch it's, wood. <laughs> it's my place to be it feels like my home now and I want to be here for the rest of you know my career